my name is Polus Links and well welcome to Narkizu once again. I'm actually recording this this one, Narkizu Himeko's Epidog, because for some reason my software didn't record what was going on on the PC. Well happens sometimes. However, well the only bad thing is I lost for this recording my martyrs and everything. Okay, I actually lost it for the game, but well for the game it was worth it, okay? This is an epic story and as Narkizu 1, as Narkizu 2 loved them both. Also cried a bit there. The same happened here. Don't know if this will affect me once again uh, right now there is a possibility to, possibility it will because it really can strike you in the guts very much and well all right not not talking anymore let's begin oh but one thing one mention there are vo voiceovers they are uh, the voiceovers are in japanese but as long as something is told i'm not going to read what's on the screen so Pay attention by yourself to that. If the if there is no voiceover at all, I'm gonna read it and we'll keep it that way. So alright, Narkizu, Himekus Epilogue. Well, sit in your chair, fasten the seatbelt because we are going on a field train. Start. じさんからの帰路に着いた私たち。そんな中、コンビニで買ったお弁当を手に、ポツリとひめこさんはつぶやいた。ねえ、ルール。ね。友達は作ってもいいって。The rolling sound of bells stopping a cart in, over, uh, in front of the church. Himeko-san dropped me off. And then... Alright, that was a short preview from Setsumi's point of view, basically. And now we are beginning the true one. Chihiro. The church. Today I was in this place again. Hold the door. At the heavy sound of the front door opening, I turned around. The returning from her final drive with Setsumi-san was my sister. I took the car keys as I answered. Before now, hadn't she always avoided interacting with me by going through Setsumi-san? Station front. It was so sudden I didn't understand what she was saying. But without paying me any heat, my sister quickly made to leave the church. And putting her hair on uh, her hand on the heavy door. Chihiro, what are you doing? What? 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 It's not going to be done. The sun was still high, the area in front of the station was busy, and the voices of cicadas rang out. Hmm. 
The two of us wandered around in front of the station, holding ice creams. Flowing sweat, the shrill cries of the cicadas, occasionally we would laugh together over trivial things. I haven't felt this way in a long time. Our feet stopped in front of a single general store. The cute things in question were a variety of flashy clothes decorating the storefront. It was a summery one piece dress, we white with a yellow sunflower pattern. I know what's this about. That's right, my sister has liked these kinds of clothes for a long time. However, she didn't seem interested in wearing them herself. Even if she bought these kind of clothes, usually Yuka-san or I ended up wearing them. It could be that Yuka-san's curly tastes were my sister's fault. Not heading, heeding my request, she quickly took it to the register and then came back with her newly purchased clothes grinning. I was happy, of course, but also a little embarrassed. It's not for us. Unexpected words from my sister. Then just what did she plan on doing? I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Burning sunlight, a high sun. Deep black shadows falling underfoot. Kids on the last beats of summer vacation going to the pool came into view. A time where cicadas could still be heard. Yuka. It's possible. ひめこが助手席にいること。そしてハンドルを握るのが私ということだった。ちょ、あんた何セブンに道譲ってんのよ。だから I've been driving manual since the training center forever. And I I I might stick to this actually. It's it's freaking enjoyable. どこまでも続く長い長い海岸線。肌に触れる風は少し冷たくなり、すでにセミの声も消えてしまったけど、鼻につく潮風も立派なフェニックスの木もすべてはあの日のままだった。うん。And then the two of us descended to the shore, can drinks in hands. And of course, neither of us forgot to prop our hands on our hips as we drank. Gazing somewhat far away, Himeko murmured, and I suddenly nodded in response. Yeah, 
私がルールに追加したから、うん、何のことかわからないけどお見舞いに行ってもいいってこと最近賞でも何でも狙ってちょうだい。Her eyes were on me as she said that. Under such a dark gaze, I couldn't sum it up. A reply. 今まで何年も共にして、夜通し話したって、話題が尽きることはなかったのに。もう二度と会えないと思っていたのに。またこうして。再び会うことができたのにい今さらメロンくらいの商品じゃ嫌よ<笑> And yet the words that finally came out were those あれだとえたまに乗ってくれるだけでいいからさ Saying that he may go pointed at her own car It was a suggestion that I had once refused. I answered with a big sigh. <laughs> And so, her car came into my possession. It was just as autumn was still beginning. From that day in the hospital parking lot, you could see a red or bent up car aim for perfect attendance. October. I was panting, pedaling, standing up on the bike. I was in the middle of an all out dash to the station. Right now it was 8 44. The office opens at 9 30. To make it in time, I needed to get on the 851 Express. Normally, I would be taking one train earlier. And by the way, my house was 10 minutes away from the train station, so normally I would be walking to the station too. But on days like today, where I would oversleep, I'd bet、uh, it all on the tiny time again from a bike dash. If I didn't pay attention, it could be confiscated. Worrying about such pointless things, I pedaled harder. Considering my standing recently, I really wanted to avoid being late. Opening the office door, I greeted everyone energetically. And before I went to my desk, I prepared the coffee maker for 15 people. That's how many people are in the department, and prepared, preparing and serving the coffee is my job. My place of work was what you'd call a stock brokerage. I've been working here a year and a half already, but was still the new one and charged with miscellaneous tasks. It might seem a bit dated to be giving tea serving a copy work to female staff, but I didn't have any special skills, nor was I good at socializing. There was no way they could give me anything important. Even now, older, more senior female staff were, like everyone else, doing their jobs efficiently. Well, the original reason I chose this company after graduating college was because the pay wasn't bad and there were many days off. From the start, it wasn't a company I chose through careful thought. That's why, even when things were like this, I didn't intend on complaining. But right now, my position in the company was getting a bit strange. Akishima kun, just like that. The chief called my name. He was the highest ranking person in the office, and there were only two reasons he would call me in. I gave a vague reply. Essentially, the chief meant that I should be staying late for work. Uh, certainly, with a small office of 15, when it's busy, they needed even my help. But that wasn't the real reason. He probably was trying to get me to be sensitive to the staff's morale. Everyone else was not only staying late but working there during days off. It probably didn't go over well when a newbie like me left at the exact same time every day. 
Well, you are a newbie, you are allowed to do this. Yeah, well, pretty sure she, uh, she, 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 she's having a much tougher time than, than them. The chief said that with small smile, but his eyes weren't smiling. From a nearby desk, I could hear someone who had probably been listening go, Tss. I actually did tell everyone through the chief that it was because I was visiting a sick friend. But that only worked for a few days. After a few weeks, 10 months, I couldn't blame them for not accepting it, even if they understood. At a time like this, if it were Himeko, she probably would have been able to say what she wanted directly. I had a feeling that even if it resulted in a fight right then, in the end, both sides would have clearer air between them. But for myself, understanding that logic and still unable to give a strong response, it probably did mean I was bad at doing things. It might seem a bit surprising, but I don't have a very strong personality. And yet, if I had been able to come this far normally, it was undoubtedly because I had Himeko. 5 p.m. Exactly. Lowering my head even more than usual, I left the office. Even though it was closing time in the company, there were only a few people in the hallways and elevator lobby. However, I didn't leave the company immediately, instead went to another floor's bathroom. The goal was to change from my current suit to some freely clothing. Ordinarily, I would be using a normal changing room. But considering my situation, I didn't want people to see me wearing freely clothing. Saying that I was visiting a sick friend wouldn't be convincing. It would actually draw suspicion. Well, even now, I don't exactly want to wear these clothes. I don't want to, but Himeko would be happier with this. I would be at ease with this. And so I chose to dress like I always did. Taking the ex expre express, the sky was already darkening when I arrived at the station. I once again made a dash by bicycle. My destination was the now familiar hospital. There, I was aiming for that perfect attendance award. Clicked too fast. From the other side of the door, the familiar voice was a little weaker than before. But just as I always did. I said my greeting and raised one hand cheerfully. I also didn't forget to flutter my freely skirt. He made answered while seated on the bed. As always, she had maps spread out, and the next to her on the nightstand was a plate of freshly peeled apples. I think they were meant to be shaped like rabbits. They were still pure white, meaning they had probably only just been cut. She probably would never say it out loud, but I think Himeko was watching the time and had prepared them for me. And even the somewhat misshapen bunny shape, I knew that she recently started having trouble with her fingers. Thinking that Himeko was in her own way, trying her best for me, was very heartbreaking. That was why I acted normal, felt I needed to be normal. Alright, now tell me, is there really a rule for that? Because I have no clue. And sucking just a little bit, Hibeko put one in her mouth. And similarly, I started eating my second. <laughs> True, a bit. She said that with a bright smile. Outside the window, the sun had set, and the street lights were starting to come on. 
The window showed the night view beyond those 15 cm and an expression unchanged from earlier days. With a body that was thinner than before, a voice weaker than before, laughed for me. Sunday Since I had the day off, I headed to the hospital in the morning. I could have come by bicycle, but recently I had been coming by car. The roadster. I was still not that used to the transmission, but one day I'll get good at it. No, I'll wind up being good at it. As we exchanged our usual greetings, I immediately started preparing the wheelchair. We didn't normally go out at night, but during the day it's become common for us to wander around the hospital. <laughs> Landing her my shoulder, I helped Himeko move to the wheelchair. In her hands was a bag of potato chips and a drink bottle. It was a bit like going to a picnic. Things have been the same for a while now, so I didn't bat an eye, but the first time she was in a wheelchair surprised me. Himeko had, just two weeks before, been able to walk on her own. And that day, while the two of us were walking in the courtyard, she suddenly declared, I'm tired, so I'm using this. And then just sat down in one of the wheelchairs lined up in the hall. And after pressuring me to push from behind, just when we started moving, she kept going on about how easy it was. In the end, I wound up being dragged around to the station front and then the shopping district. Finally, we got in trouble with the nurses and doctors for leaving the hospital without permission. Instead of replying, I began to push the wheelchair up the door. Along the way to the elevator, I exchanged greetings with people in the lounge and nurses station. By now, there were many doctors and nurses that I knew on site. We came to the courtyard. With it being the middle of October, you could feel a chill in the air on your skin. But even then, with the hospital building on all four sides, there wasn't any wind. When we got to the courtyard, we went to the flower beds first. More precisely, we went to the far edge of the flower beds. <laughs> there was a faucet at the edge of the flower beds. And attached to it was a hose about 20 meters or so long. Stopping the wheelchair in front of it, I handed Himeko to the, the end of the hose. On that signal, water flowed out the end of the hose vigorously. Then it scattered over the white flower beds that the courtyard's wandering walkway went through. The sunlight streaming down caught the water drops and turned into a rainbow that stretched from Himeko as she sat in the wheelchair. I pushed Himeko, wrapped in a small rainbow, forward. Sometimes Himeko would dictate the speed for me. That was because there were a number of flowers beds along the path, and if we went too fast, they couldn't be watered. Like this, Himeko did her best to do the watering herself. Did she have some connection to it? Watering by herself? That question had occurred to me before, and I had once asked. But back then she replied with, uh, just because, in her usual way, with a smile. At her words, I stopped the wheelchair, in front of some sort of green plants. By now the summer flowers had completely disappeared, and the autumn ones were on the way out, so seeing green was surprising. Narcissus. I gave a vague answer, but I only knew them while they were in bloom. 
これって冬の花だからさ、早くても12月になってからね。Having said that, Himeko resumed gazing seriously at the green plants and watering them. And next to her, in the same way, I gazed at them. I hope they bloom soon. Even though they were such natural words. To become December. To get to December, I had been told it would be very difficult for Himeko to hold on that long. <laughs> Suddenly she murmured. Chihiro <laughs> A name I haven't heard before. Even though I've been with him a long time and felt we knew most things about each other, which meant that it had to be someone Himeko met in the past few months while I didn't see her. As I thought that over, one thing came to mind. I had seen the girl named Setsumi just once and didn't know anything about her. But if it were something that Himeko was worried about, then more than likely it was something important to Himeko. And eventually, after thinking for a while, I didn't really understand what she meant. No, I understood the words she was saying, but didn't understand what she meant to do. And from there, the watering of the flower beds ended and we made to leave the courtyard. Suddenly she turned around and whispered to me. And then she quietly closed her eyes. Alright, I feel like I still won't be able to hold down the tears again. Later on, there were still rainbows beaming from the mist in the air. Wrapped in those rainbows, Himeko prayed for me while sitting in the wheelchair. That form seemed very beautiful to me. It was almost mystical. Even though she was supposed to be my best friend, with whom I've spent countless years, and even though we knew everything about each other, she seemed to be in a different place somehow, and that was heartbreaking. A few days later, my work was done for the day, it was 5 pm, the time I'd come to think of as closing time. Maybe it was because it was Thursday, but the office seemed busier than usual. I'm sorry, everyone, but even one thinking that I prepared to leave. Akishima kun, kyo zangyo ii kana? No, go fuck yourself. That's what I would say. The chief's voice caught. Okay, I wouldn't say the, the second part, but you know, unlike previously, he specifically used the words work late. The moment he uttered that phrase, all the sounds around me stopped. There was no mistake. Everyone else was listening in and gauging the situation. Uh 
えっと、申し訳ないんですけど。Well, they basically don't really know the situation, okay? They know only visiting their sick friends. And let's say some people don't really get that idea. True. But some other things. But, well, you will see later. いや、別に10時や11時まで残業ってわけじゃなくて、2時間ほどでいいから。Yeah, how about stop talking and s o n you should do the job by yourself, man. His way of speaking was calm, but it was clear that he was angrier than usual. And since I had been running out at exactly the same time lately, he had even more reason. Sorry, bro. We are working from 9 to 5, and that's what she is doing, so. Boom! Middle finger to you. But today, Chihiro had said she needed to talk to me about Himeko. So I wanted to leave as quickly as I could. Obviously. This time, anyone within earshot could hear the amount of sarcasm voice. I heard someone at the nearby day saying that they'd known it wasn't going to work. At this point, it wasn't even a matter of working late or office moral. It probably had to do with respect for the position of chief of this office. Uh, I have no respect towards him. Toshka, Tomodachi no Omi Mai ni Tiru so da ne. Ah, hi. So des. Ore dot the Kimucha Wakara nai demo nai. Taisetna Tomodachi nara nao sara daro. And then he took a deep breath. Na, Kishima kun. Kura yinga tai koto danga. <coughs> Alright, man, don't give me this crap. You work, she works from 9 to 5. That's enough. She doesn't need to take additional hours if she doesn't want to. What a pain it is. That's why, so I'm going to go to the house and go to the house. Yeah, use common sense and shut up, man. It was a bit indirect, but I completely understood what he was trying to say. Yeah. Sorry. I lowered my hand deeply. I couldn't think of anything else to say. And even if I could, I didn't have the sort of personality that would have let me say it. From a distance, I heard someone quip, Chief, stop making girls cry! Which was both frustrating and saddening. Eventually, when 5 30 closing time I ro、uh, rolled out around, I left the office as for I were running away. As for the usual change of clothes, I did that even more quickly than usual. Chihiro, I don't know what kind of talk she wanted, but I needed to hurry. With that in mind, I hurried to leave the first floor lobby. And now the troubles arrived. They were probably on their way back from the convenience store picking stuff up to their, for their late night. With the worst time possible, I ran to a group of my senior female co workers. <sighs> Spoken as she looked at my free clothes, judging by her thin smile, this was clearly sarcasm. 9 to 5, 9 to 5. <laughs> コンビニおにぎりでこれから終電まで残業なのにね<笑>すみませんもう少ししたら私が代わりにじゃあ聞くけどもう少しっていつよえそれはあーてっビーチ I couldn't answer No it was that I couldn't Chihiro had told me that there were There was a mouth left at best. And she didn't say directly, but Himeko herself had been saying things with a similar nuance. But I hesitated putting the time into words. I was afraid that if I said it loud, it would be like accepting Himeko's death. Because no! Fuck you! Die. Die. Burn in hell, woman. How can you go with such assumptions, okay? Baka. Otoko no toko itteru ni kimatteru desho? 
you die as well. Die. Tus Fake kept flinging their slander and complaints at me, for I shouldn't really speak of death in this game. Because, well... More like, shut up, okay? Consider it not die, but shut up, okay? That's all. And I couldn't do anything but listen quietly. Even if I wanted to explain things, I didn't feel I could do it well. Saying simply that, I cut through the crowd of female seniors and hurried away. Give me a sec. Uh, ba -ba -ba. It took all I had to just shake off the Hey, come back here! That I heard from behind me. Showing my face at work tomorrow just became even harder. Thinking that, I hurried along the ori dark street to the station. I just felt extremely sad and wanted to see Meko as soon as possible. Chihiro. Hi, <laughs> I spread my lunch out on the nightstand as I asked for it. I brought a little extra so my sister could pick at it too. Sitting up in the bed, my sister stretched her chopsticks toward the lunchbox on the nightstand. I did the same thing and we ate our croquettes together. Before my sister uh, would have gone to the cafeteria herself and eaten whatever she wanted, but that had stopped. Even for my sister wouldn't say so herself, I've been assigned to a number of 7th floor patients, so I know. Truth was, it wasn't that she chose not to eat, she couldn't, or rather, the things she could eat were limited. Even if she wanted to put it in her mouth, unless it was liquid or soft, it was difficult to swallow. <laughs> Hmm. It's not what she means. I stiffened, reflexively. She didn't mean something as simple as the next four trip after this one ended. It was certainly a depressing thing, but it was important. Just when I had been thinking to discuss it with Yuka today, I didn't expect to hear it from my sister's mouth first. I decided to give up and speak honestly about it. It was probably impossible for me to talk my way out of it, and I would have to ask her sooner or later. The meaning of changing the fur drip. Sadly, there was a limit uh, to how much even morphine can stop pain, and there was a limit to how much could be given. Putting a finger onto her face, she made a show of thinking about it. This final drip wasn't required treatment, the patient had a choice. I don't know what it's like in other hospitals, but at least in this hospital, this was how it was done. Normally they would have waited until much closer to the end before informing them of the choice of drips. It was mostly likely, as my sister said, because she was well known here, they were giving her the choice early. Mm. 
点滴受けるわ。先生の行為もあるみたいだし。で、でも、お姉ちゃん。いいのよ。私だって本格的に痛くなるの嫌だからさ。My sister said that with a smile, but the truth was different. I felt I knew my sister enough to know she wouldn't accept the drip for that reason. It was because she didn't want me, our parents, or her friends to see her suffer. Especially in Yuka's case, she probably wouldn't want her to witness that. Nejiro, you are the strongest woman I've ever seen. Suddenly, to my surprise, the topic switched to me. だってそうでしょう。毎日毎日、大学終わったら七階に来て、休みの日には養護学校にボランティアにも行って、その上で教会の手伝いも欠かさない。もし私が神様だったら、確実に天国行きにしてあげるわ。お姉ちゃん。だから悪いことは言わない。私が死んだら一度ヘルパーはお休みしなさい。The feels strikes again me. Oh God. そしてもし再会したくなっても、別の病院に行きなさい。じゃあ、この病院には来ちゃダメなのその時は、完全にあなたが立ち直ってからね。My sister's tone was cold, far different from her usual way of speaking. I still didn't understand, but I know that silent. これがあなたに対する魔法よ。魔法？そう。私レベルなんで効果は期待できないけど。で。そういえば一つお願いがあるの。Seeing that she took a paper box out from under the bed。いつの日か、せつみがあなたの元を訪ねるかもしれないわ。せつみさんが？もしその時に服を持ってきたならば、代わりにこれを渡して。ひょっとして、それがせつみさんへの魔法？ええ、残り半分のね。ユカ、perfect attendance words. The sky in the shortened days of October, when it became completely dark, I headed for the familiar place. よ、相変わらず元気そうね。いらっしゃい、ユカ。Sitting down in the usual pipe chair, we started talking like every other day. So, いえばゆか、例の解禁症だけど。何よ、ちゃんと休まずに続けているわよ、私。<laughs> そうじゃなくて、今週末までで OK だから。Suddenly, bad thoughts strung together in my mind. Um, um. Die にはもうしばらくあると思うんだけど。なんだ。脅かさないでよ。でもね、もうすぐ点滴が変わるから。点滴？意味がわからないわ。あのね、ゆか。その点滴を使い始めると、もう起きているのか寝ているのか、自分でもよくわからない状態になるのよ。It was so sudden, words failed me. More precisely, I couldn't figure out what to say. そんなわけで、点滴変わった私は、すでに私じゃないと思ってちょうだい。で、でも。そんなこと言われてもダメよ。私だってそんな姿は見られたくないんだから。After that, we kept pushing back and forth with questions and answers, and I left the hospital room. 
and I went looking for the person who could tell me more. It was true. It wasn't that I didn't believe him, but it was also sudden my feelings wouldn't settle down. was wrapped. Saying that I'm gonna bicycle, I was in the midst of an all dodge to the station. Right now it was 7.50. Even though it was earlier than usual, I was heading to the office by bike. Because of what happened yesterday, let's go earlier. Of course that thought was part of it, but more than that, I just wanted to move my body until I sweated. sweated. Actually, that's also an option. If well, your boss is a pain in the ass, you have to say, and he wants to you to stay longer. Well, just do a little trick and go earlier to the job. <laughs> that's some solution. With the same polite smile as always, I distributed everyone's morning coffee. Everyone probably already knew about last night's clothing incident. There were even those who were obviously fuming when I handed them their coffee. As a rule, the workplace was busy today. There were people constantly talking on the phone, people arguing over a stock chart, and the throughout was the sound of people busily typing on keyboards. However, there are no computers around. As you probably noticed, there are no monitors on these desks, but we only can see six uh, seats, so you never know, because there are 15 in total, right? In the midst of that was my desk, under a mountain made up of a clearly unnecessary amount of invoice reconciliations. But my heart didn't have time for that. I looked at the clock, it was still morning. No, just before noon already. Today was the last day I could see Himeko. Even though we had spent countless years with each other, and were always together, I couldn't bear it and stood up. <laughs> Yes! Are you deaf? His tone wasn't angry. If anything, he was probably exasperated. Given what had happened up until today, and especially yesterday, it was understandable. You know what's annoying? That you don't really feel any emotions flowing from him. At all. That's probably the worst kind of boss because of that. Friend! He said it calmly, but I could practically hear the silence you were fired underneath the words. Friend! I really wanted to answer that my friend was important, more important. He will hear the answer. Or maybe not. But for me, that was difficult. It wasn't a fear of being fired that stopped me. More than that, it was the weakness of not wanting to be disliked. 
I'm so glad I don't have that feeling anymore. Uh, I tried searching for the right words to smooth things over. But I neither had the skill to find them, nor the guts to say them. <laughs> Without punching my time card, I ran down the hallway and fled the company. <laughs> Why couldn't I just go to Himeko proudly? The sun was still high. As I was being swayed by the e express going back, I kept thinking about it. It wasn't as if I was angry at the people at the company. If anything, I was aware I was doing them wrong, and I felt bad about it. But more than that, I felt I'd done Himeko a disservice. Even though I knew what was most important to me and what I wanted to protect, I felt pathetic for not acting on it. I was frustrated with my own weakness. I felt I'd not done right by Himeko. I wanted to see her soon. As soon as I got to the hospital, I hurried to the elevator. I pressed the button for 7th floor. The 30 second wait to arrive felt impossible long. I grew irritated as the at the elevator door for opening so slowly and rushed to the hospital room. I sat in the pipe chair and caught my breath before I did anything else. I had been trying to keep my behavior toward Himeko as normal and unchanged as possible. But I wasn't very confident about it today. But now, more than ever, I needed to pretend to be normal. Saying that, I gave a light smile. I couldn't lose focus, because otherwise Himeko was sharp about some things. Right now, no matter how small, I didn't want to burden her with any regrets. Water scattering on the flower beds from the hose. The sunlight once again made a small rainbow that surrounded Himeko. <laughs> That's right, she forgot to change the clothes! Ho ho ho! I went and did it. After she mentioned it, I realized that today I was still wearing my suit. I'd forgotten to change in the first floor bathroom and instead had flown straight here. And let's face it, women in clothes like that look great. Really. ちょっと寒そうだったからね。ウリフリじゃ。うん。よくわからないけど。まあ似合ってるからいいんじゃない。え、そうかな。やっぱ少しは立派に見えるじゃない。よく見たら誰がよわよわよ。<笑><笑><
ぶ伸びてきたけど、つぼみをつけるのはまだ先ね。I'd heard before that they would bloom in December at the earliest. While right now it was the end of October, moreover tomorrow it had been decided that Himeko would take that fourth trip. It was plainly obvious that Himeko wouldn't be able to see the flowers. Even though I had been trying not to show it in my body language, I unconsciously let it show on my face. I couldn't get distracted now. I needed to act like normal. Until the very end, I mustn't let her see me sad. I couldn't let Himeko, who would fade away tomorrow, feel even the slightest bit of unease. As someone aiming for the perfect attendance word, It was a rule I made for myself. じゃあ、次はチューリップの花壇に移動して。はいはい、今すぐ押しますって。But, is it really okay to keep things this way? Even when we'll be saying goodbye this time tomorrow? As I thought about that, we went and watered all the flower beds. Then, as we were about to head into the hospital, As I was wondering what she meant, Himeko pointed in the direction of her next destination. She pointed beyond the outpatient reception, the parking lot. Of course, over there it continued to the rear entrance of the hospital. Now prepare because this will be good. I suddenly nodded and spoke quietly. Really, prepare because this will be a truly great scene. Well, not now, but later on, but it will appear soon. Really good, really good one. What was I supposed to do? For just a moment I hesitated. Common sense said we wouldn't be let off easy, it might also be criminal. More than anything, it would be a betrayal of the good graces of the doctors. And of course, in this situation, no one in the hospital would give permission to take her outside. But I was different. Even if everyone in the entire world refused, I was the best friend. With that short answer, I slowly started pushing the wheelchair towards the main entrance. I knew that. Compared to the ambulance or admittance entrances, this one was less conspicuous. And until we came to the parking lot, I carefully kept peering about as I headed to the car. In the corner of the parking lot, there, a red open top car, unassumingly parked. A car that was the prize for perfect attendance, and very soon would come into my ownership. I lifted the car's current owner from her wheelchair and set her own in the passenger seat. Next, I brought out the top and hung the forward rib above the passenger seat, then fastened her seat belt. It was sounding that someone as weak as me was able to pick Himeko up. With that, I turned the engine over and headed for her hospital parking lot to the stoplight in front of us. As always, the still unfamiliar clutch cluttered and shook the car as it went. The October sky beyond the windshield. For some reason, it seemed almost scarily blue, clear and high. Saitama Prefecture, 2 p.m. Now prepare, because this will be good. 
The roadster drove on some road, reflecting the sky on its red body it ran on. We had just gone an hour from the hospital. Occasionally we would follow Himeko's directions and were now driving on a national road. For someone like myself, who rarely drove a car, I could only virtually guess at our location. I had no idea where we were headed. But what I did know was that Himeko would give directions at the important points. In front of us was a large sign saying, Welcome to Tokyo! Apparently we had entered Itabashi. Oh, we will see, we will see. And so we continued on the road a bit more, and as we passed a number of large intersections, when the shortened day started to stain with the sunset, suddenly a familiar place appeared before my eyes. It was the station that I got off at every day for work. <laughs> I had never intended for her to find out. At the least, I haven't ever spoken to anyone about my workplace, not only to Himeko, but Chihiro also. And I had never taken her to my office, and of course don't know how to drive there. And as always, this car didn't have a navigation system, so I had no clue how to get to this place. And rising her body up from where it had sunk in down the seat. Saying that, she extended her hand outside from the passenger seat. Of course, we didn't have a wheelchair. To begin with, this car didn't have the space to pack it, and I hadn't even considered that we would get out of the car. <laughs> That's what I was talking about, the epicness begins. Just how much did Himeko guess it? It was true that I was causing trouble for the company and was aware of the fact. But if Himeko was feeling that she was the one responsible, then she might be planning on apologizing on my behalf. No matter what, I wanted to avoid that. With just those words, Himeko started trying to get out of the car on her own. I rushed to the passenger seat and picked her up in my arms. Even I... I wasn't afraid of being fired, even I knew that. Himeko was wearing pajamas and holding and four drip in her hand. Seeing me carrying Himeko in my arms through the front lobby, the guard's eyes popped. No, it was just the guard. All the employees walking by looked surprised, wondering what was happening. Eventually, we got onto the elevator and I pressed the button for the third floor. There we came to the office that I went to see so, so often. When they saw me after I fled earlier today, everyone in the office froze. And seeing that I was carrying Kimako in Mars, the staff rushed over to see what was the matter. Interrupted in the middle of speaking, I quietly set Himeko down. Since we've already this far, it might be best to let Himeko do whatever she wanted. 
and even if afterwards I had to take responsibility for it, that's just how it would be. If me apologizing will make Himeko's regrets disappear, I will apologize as many times as I need to. But no matter what, I didn't want Himeko to have to bow her head. I wanted Himeko to always, always be proud and dignified. <laughs> あ、he seriously doesn't have any emotions. Yeah, we would need an ambulance, but for you, man, if I was there, seriously. The whole time she had been speaking, I had been lending her my shoulder, and now she pushed me forward. <laughs> now the epicness begins. Well, it's in the middle of big. We are in the middle of epicness, but it will be the most, most epic part in a second. I didn't expect this. Every word and action Himeko took wasn't anything like what I'd expected. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Shut up, you emotions, emotionless piece of whatever you are. Akishima-kun, you too, you. In this state, you're going to take me to the hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know a lot about that for sure. So, if you don't, you're going to give me a gift to this girl. Ah, ah, yes. Sorry. Boom! The instant I was finishing saying I'm sorry, a dry sound echoed through the office. For an instant, I understand what had happened. The then numbness spread throughout my neck. I realized that my cheek had been slapped with full force by Himeko. Exactly. How about you decide? Is it ambulance or security? There's a huge difference between the two. <laughs> oh, he doesn't send the trials to Hibako. Well, you, should, you should be polite, no matter if someone is sick or not, you garbage. I'm not polite towards him, I know. But he doesn't deserve this, actually. <laughs> Boom! A second dry sound reverberated. After hitting me without holding back, Himeko swayed and grabbed my shoulder. Even though we had argued almost every day, she had never once hit me. <laughs> Tears began to fall unbidden. It wasn't as if my cheek hurt from being hit, but something somewhere hurt. While continuing to lend my shoulder to Himeko, I took one step forward. And opening my mouth wide. Kachou,以前に友達と仕事とどっちが大切かって聞いたけど、そりゃ仕事の方が大切です。ねえ、秋島くん、別にそのことはもういいから。
Ants. How about you won't interrupt her in the middle of the sentence? From Himeko, who would fade away tomorrow? To me, who would be left all alone? Yup, exactly. On the way home inside the car, the short autumn day, despite it being just 5 pm, was starting to change into night. Himeko sank into the passenger seat, and I was handling the wheel. Neither of us opened our mouths as we followed the road back quietly. The first one to break the silence was Himeko. That's what I said, but I didn't really know myself. At this point the company seemed trivial and I had feeling, a feeling I gained something much more important. At the least, since last spring when Himeko first was admitted to the hospital, I don't remember talking about work. And of course, I don't remember telling Chihiro. In fact, I think I made a point to avoid the topic. Alright, I will hit 23 years this year. Now coming back about the years. Uh, not born in November 25, not Sagittarius, different blood type. I don't collect any small cute things. I watch anime true, freely call things not my thing. Untrue to herself, Tsundere. That might be a bit true. Suddenly she started talking about me. Yeah. And what followed were things no one else knew. Other than myself, only Himeko knew those things. Saying that, he may cost mine slightly. I was happy to hear her use the phrase best friend to refer to none other than myself. When I think that Himeko, who can stand proudly before anyone, calls me her best friend, it fills me with pride. Under the new completely darkened sky, the red roaster ran. Eventually places that even I recognized came to view, and that indicated that we would soon be near the hospital. We'd arrive at the hospital, and tomorrow the fall trip would change. It meant that the time to say goodbye to Himeko was approaching. The next day. In the morning I came to the 7th floor. Today in the lounge there were an unusually large number of people. There were doctors and family nurses, and not only Himeko's parents, but people who appeared to be relatives. And there were priests and sisters, apparently from the church, 
all were packed in. And when I tried to go to Himeko's hospital room like always... You must intend! The person who spoke to stop me was the nurse or doctor, but the sister. She was blocking the door. Why not, even when I wanted to talk more? But the atmosphere wasn't the kind for talking back. It had a special air about it. Turning around, I saw that in place for her, of her usual apron, Shiro was wearing a chic outfit. <laughs> I couldn't help but rush to ask. With those words, Chihiro once again returned to the lounge. Normally she was always calm, but today she seemed ever calmer than usual. I had almost forgotten, but she was a member of the church, and Himeko was also one of the faithful. When facing life and death, at the least compared to us living normally, they probably sincerely were able to accept it. After I waited for a while, people in the lounge started being called into the hospital room one by one. Family, parents, nurses that Himeko was close to, children from the church. They would be called into the room roughly every 10 minutes, and then exit the room. And then Chihiro was called in. With a bit of nervousness, I knocked. It was the last time we would be able to meet like this. I could hear a weak voice from beyond the door. Suddenly I wound up thinking, even that I'm like this, uh, should I really be acting the same? Or could it be that, at least for today, I was allowed to cry? Just for an instant I hesitated, but I decided that I should act normally. Ripping the car key that was still in my pocket, I told myself that my perfect attendance still wasn't secure. The two of us exchanged greetings in a light tone. It was an exchange we had held countless times in this place. The only difference was that in the corner of the room there was a table with a white cloth on it, and on top there were lit candles and a cross. There were also strangely shaped glasses laid out, as well as bread. Saying that, she spread both her hands and then closed them, saying that they would be anointed with holy oil. While making a small nonsense sound, I sat down in the usual pipe chair. The cushion I'd brought in before, the one with a picture of a cat on it, seemed to have been useful for a number of people today. And she mischievously stuck her tongue out. I wouldn't say it out loud, but I thought Himeko was without a doubt a good person. <sighs> that thought silently came to me, and I felt myself about to cry. So I kept talking about anything at all. There was only a tiny amount of time left to talk like this. Honestly, I didn't remember in vain. It wasn't like I wanted to say this. I just want to say a word of thanks, but in front of Himeko, as always, I couldn't be true to myself. 
たまには殴り合うもんでしょ親友ってのは。な、何よそれ。どんな漫画より抜粋なのよ。<笑> The unexpected words, best friend, struck my heart. I was happy. But I still mustn't cry. I still have to finish my perfect sentence. Until then, I need to be my normal self. That was my rule to myself. But not just happiness, but sadness and loneliness. Emotions that I couldn't put into words welled up. Ow! <laughs> When the tears I was just barely holding back were about to be too much. Hey! My eyes are getting watery as well, okay, again! Damn it! The sound of my cheek being hit, same as yesterday, and Himeko's voice reverberated through the hospital room. Yes, you can. But. <laughs> Saying that, Himeko put her hand on my cheek, which had started turning red. Leaning her body over from the bed, the hand that touched my cheek was warm. Surely, Himeko was hurting many times more than me being hit. And that's why I forced myself to swallow my tears in my heart. Starting tomorrow, Himeko won't be around. I will be alone. I mustn't cry. Not just for Himeko, but for myself too. And she gave a big sigh. And so, after I'd taken my third slap, including yesterday's too, and barely avoiding crying, and I'll bite from a girl receiving my first, very first marriage proposal, Himeko's fourth trip changed. One week later. Chihiro-chan, now how are you? Yuka-san. In front of the lunch, after finding Chihiro, that was the first thing I said. Leaving the lunch, I went to the hospital room. Himeko had told me that I didn't have to come anymore, but I continued going. And coming to the room, I stopped for a moment and spoke softly. Even if Himeko were awake, I knew there wouldn't be an answer. But now, even if I tried to knock, there was only a curtain. The door was always open. With that little phrase, I sat down in the familiar small pipe chair. On the bed, she was sleeping with an oxygen tube attached. And so I started reporting the events of the day to Himeko. I kept talking almost as if to myself. There wasn't any real reason for this act, no goal. 
Once in a while, if Himeko were awake and you'd talk to her, you were lucky to get an mm, in reply. There wasn't much difference compared to when she was sleeping. I had heard that on rare occasions she might be alert, but he, I wasn't really expecting that. I don't really know myself. That was the best way to express it. Express. Magic. From there, another two weeks passed. Soon October would end, and today I still was going to that usual place. Himeko continued to sleep atop the bed. She slept so quietly. If it weren't for the hard monitor's readout, you would think that she had already died. ね、ひめこ。Alone, sitting on a small pipe chair, I continued speaking softly. When I gripped the hand lying straight out on the sheets, it was very warm. The pain from when she had slapped me on the cheek had faded away, but the warmth from the hand that touched me was the same. I suddenly recalled the time she hit me. She had said that best friends hit, friends hit each other. But in our case, I was the only one being hit. Remembering that, I slowly stretched out my hand and gently hit Himeko on the cheek. It made a soft sound. Instead of hitting, caressing was probably more correct, but this was enough. And preparing to end today's visit, I got up from the pipe chair. It was dead. I was simply happy. It wasn't like I had hope for this, but I had thought that we would never be able to speak again. It was sudden, so the words got a bit stuck, but it was alright, for he had an answer prepared. It was an answer that I had come to by thinking over the last few days. Thinking of the possibility I had practiced endlessly imagining it. <laughs> the practice paid off. I managed to say the whole thing without stuttering. But in my, at my posturing, Himeko's mouth just softened a bit. I answered as cheerfully as I could. I didn't know how long Himeko would stay alert, but he probably was in the wrong time. Himeko 
それじゃないわあなただけにしか聞かないと私だけの、oh, えあなたに対してだけはどうやっても見つからなかったんだけど私もここ数日考えてやっと見つけることができたのよ And posing, she took a deep breath and looked straight at me. Arigato. <laughs> All of a sudden, tears overflowed. I had planned just in case and practiced countless times simulating. There were such simple words. It did actually have him upset too. Just none of it worked. Saying that she smiled at me. <laughs> and so my best friend fell to into an eternal sleep. The car key in my pocket was the perfect attendance price. Transferred into my possession. God damn. How is it possible that I knew the outcome? Still. The flower beds in the courtyard that came to view before me were decorated with those flowers. d a p p o d i l s First scientific name was a r c h i s o l s They bloomed from November to March. The white and yellow flower beds were beginning to form. <laughs> Epilogue magic. <laughs> That's a Sumi talking, by the way. Suddenly, a single car stopped in front of me, a red open top car. It was one that I recognized. Opening the door and getting out was a short young woman. And she was walking straight towards me. I believe I met this person before at the beach. However, she wore free clothes before and left me with an impression of cuteness. Now she wore a crisp summer suit. My clothing. It was a question she asked while looking at my pink pajamas. <laughs> Saying just that, the young woman went back to the car. And then, just when I thought she would start the engine and drive off. Narkizuan. Simply epic, but alright. Afterwards, 1980, let's go with that as well. Hello, Tomokotoka here. Thank you for playing Himeko's epilogue this time. This time around in the game's timeline, it goes to the last scene of Narkizu 2. Yeah. 
And so, after all this time, I'd be happy if you took a look at Narkizu 2 again. And for this afterward, I will debate on what to write. And so this time I've included 1980, which many have wanted to see again. Uh, originally it was something I wrote for the staff room section of a game, called Ramune. But when the PlayStation and anime versions came out, it had been cut, so there might not be that many people who have seen it before. To be frank, even though there had been demand all this time, it wasn't a product, so... And so I never really, really, really released it. Ramune, you say? But if it's but even if it's Narkizu, then I felt it might be fine. No, I thought that I'd like it if people who have played Narkizu saw this. You might even call 1980 and 1993 the originals roots of Narkiz. And so, thank you so much for reading this far. 2015, Autumn, Tomo Kataoka. Note, 1993 is scheduled to appear in Narkizu L2 Iris. Okay, so it's there as well, so it will be as well here. But now, 1981st. It was almost 30 years ago, when I was still a middle school student. Ask me. May, a call came from M, a friend that I was somewhat close to. The reason was that he was in trouble. At that time he hadn't come to school for a week, so I was just not too worried about M. I didn't know exactly what the issue was, but I decided to hear things out. My old man is in Comco. The first thing that came out of M's mouth upon opening the door. To begin with, M's home didn't have a mother, and they had been living on public assistance. That was why, from the beginning, M never depends, depended on parents. We often went to the pachinko parlors to play the machines together, and I knew of the part-time jobs he took. I'm sure that we were special cases, but amongst my buddies, there wasn't anyone who relied on their parents. Us kids were living it, sorry, independently in our own childish way. Actually, my sister. Continue on, the words that followed were about M's sister, little as me. One school grade below me, I knew her well. Something happened to little as me? Well, she's going to be discharged from the hospital. I didn't know about it, but apparently she had been in the hospital. Is it that there is not enough to pay the hospital bill? As my question, M's head shook uh, side to side. Even now, I don't understand the details, but apparently there weren't any costs related to the hospital. What M was talking about wasn't that. Instead, it was how living right now was going to be difficult. Well, I guess if your dad isn't around, it would be hard. However, at the almost whispered question, M just remained silent. That I now can understand. I'm sure that even then, M knew. Three days later, discharge day. Either way, I had a buddy of mine arrange a car and had her driven from the somewhat distant hospital back. Kisan, thank you. I hadn't seen little as me in a while, and she seemed a bit thinner. However, her shiny smiling face was the same as always. At the time, since she had just been released from the hospital, I thought she'd get better soon. That night, M asked for my advice. For the foreseeable future, they were going to the have uh, very, they were going to have trouble making ends meet. For kids like us who had never relied on parents to begin with, M's words lacked strength. I don't want to leave the house. But upon hearing those words I understood a number of things. I think that not wanting to leave the house was in order to be in constantly watch over his sister's health. Since she had just been discharged it was more than enough to imagine. And being at home all the time meant that there would be no way to earn enough to live. Because M could normally manage to make enough to get by, at the least it was a convincing statement. The next day I gathered up my loose change and put together about 70,000 yen. M was happy. June, little as me, was being admitted to the hospital again. She 
She went by ambulance. I also came along. It was then that M told me the details for the first time. This little SP wasn't admitted to a normal hospital ward, but a hospice. Up until now, M's dad had apparently done all this when he was around. And I was told that the stomach cancer had already been completely removed, but it had spread to the other places and she couldn't be saved. That was why, instead of a normal ward, the hospice. When her disease calmed down, she would be returned home. When it flared up, she'd once again return to the hospice. Just repeating, it wasn't as if the disease itself was being cured. I don't know how many more times she will be able to come back. That's what M said. Does little S me know? At the time, M didn't give me an answer, but added that she probably noticed, even if vaguely. Visiting the hospital room, little S me was there with an oxygen mask, apparently watching the television. And seeing that it was me with her half open eyes, she gave me just the slightest of shy smiles. Are you okay? Very cliche words. At the time, I couldn't say anything but that. The next day, I swore with them that the two of us would work together. I would work part time at night in a plant in an industrial area, and would work part time in a nearby pachinko shop during the day. And of course, at the jobs we both hit our ages to work those places. The two of us would take our free time and go to the hospital. It was a plan to do our best not to leave as me alone. And through all this I went to school where I could, and didn't go at all. And M's dad, who had went off somewhere, showed absolutely no signs of coming back. Coming back, what a piece of shit father, isn't he? And in our free time, and I, and I took turns being in a hospital room. Every day I sat among white walls in a small pipe chair, talking to little s, me, about inconsequential, inconsequential things. These were visiting hours for the hospital, but in the hospice, they let me through at almost any time. I liked the time after the temperature taking around 8 in the morning. I liked the refreshing tune, sunlight and her happy shy smile. Two weeks later. Little s, me, no, by then I was calling her s, me. It was the second time she was released from the hospice. You could use the ambulance when being admitted to the hospital, but you couldn't use one when being discharged. You also didn't have enough money to use the taxi. So once again, I asked her buddy to give us a little lift home in a beat up sub compact. Together, we carefully carried her up to the fourth floor in the public housing complex that was M's home. Even by looking, as me was thinner and she was light, that was sounding. July. This year was extremely hot. We were fine with just the fun, but it seemed to affect Esme's body. No, it's fine. Esme said like she always did while smiling. And for us, that made it even more saddening. We couldn't get her an air conditioner. We were frustrated at being powerless kids. We, were want we wanted to hurry up and become adults. The next day, I took the air conditioner in my room and with a screwdriver and monkey wrench forced it off. I was used to moving so I just imitated what I had seen. Together with M, I carried the heavy outdoor unit to the 4th floor and that complex and somehow managed to connect it to Esme's room. The gas inside had leaked out quite a bit, so it didn't cool very well. Well, isn't it cool? Despite that, she said that and laughed. She was extremely happy. That night, the three of us celebrated Tanabata in front of the ineffective air conditioner. Myself and Mem had chilled cans of beer, as me had orange juice. It was a Tanabata without any bamboo or strips or paper hanging from the branches, but it was fun. August, the third time she was admitted to the hospital. This was also via ambulance, when I wasn't around. And in the waiting room, I had a long discussion with Mem. Without his dad or any other relatives around, it might have been that M had heard from the hospital doctors. At any rate, strong cancer-fighting drugs apparently weren't going to be used. Since there weren't any relatives that were legally adults, it might have also been a difficult decision for the doctors. I think this might be the last time. M whispered. I was sure what he meant by the last time was that she'd never go home again. 
and if she did manage to go back, she would never come to the hospital ward again. White walls, cheap pipe chairs, tall M was bent over and sitting in a chair. As me with that oxygen mask life thing on would sometimes notice us and would narrow her eyes with a smile. Two days later, burning sunlight and the cries of cicadas. The asphalt on the road headed to the hospital was wavering from the hot, hot, from the heat. Sitting in the pipe chair, I was talking to Esme. Hey, Kisan! Suddenly, Esme looked at me with a lonely face. I'm probably done for. Suddenly, I was hit with the words I didn't want to hear. I was sure that even Esme, Esme knew. I didn't want her to ask. I didn't know what to respond with and was so afraid. Honestly, I want to say that's not true. Wanted to deny it with you will be fine soon. But I didn't have that strength. And ultimately, I couldn't do anything except silently not. The burning sunlight from the window made the pure white room all the more white. As me let a small sob slip. I think I was also crying. September. But there was still some lingering summer heat. She was discharged a third time. We were happy. We had given up on her being released anymore. But most likely we wouldn't come back here. Em had said so. I had a similar feeling too. The usual, the usual buddy took us in the subcompact. The two of us carried her up to the complex's fourth floor. It felt like Esme had gotten even lighter than before. And that was saddening. This time around, teachers from the school and volunteer helpers occasionally would come. I learned that while they were the rare, there were good adults. When it became night, we turned on that weak air conditioner, and the three of us made plans. I have this sense that we spoke for a long time about many things. But in the end, let's go to where Smee wants to go. Let's do what Smee wants to do. It was simply just that. An answer us kids managed to think up. Night at the end of the month, I went and borrowed the car from that buddy of mine, but just the car, no driver included. And of course, I had no license. Heck, I wasn't even at an age where I could get a mor motorcycle license. And putting Esme and M in, working the unfamiliar clutch, I went off on a night drive. We were headed for the nearby N beach by car. It was about 15 minutes away. We came to the sea. On the deserted beach we started playing with fireworks. The mountain of rocket and dragon fireworks we bought were all used up like in a bonfire. We played on a big octopus shaped slide. Me and M shot rocket fireworks at each other. Our hands stunk of gunpowder, but Esme laughed happily for us. And then the three of us sat on the beach and drank canned drinks. M and I had cola, while Esme had orange juice again. The sound of breaking waves, moist winds, if you looked up the sky was filled with the light of the summer constellations. The traces of white foam left by the waves zigzagged as far as could be seen. Without speaking of three, the three of us just gazed at that. Tuesday. 2 a.m. That day I was at M's house with them as usual. He hadn't really been sleeping well lately from the stress of caretaking, so it was my turn to be awake. Thinking that Smith's throat might be dry, I gave her some eyes. And after a while my name was called. I was called with a weak voice, eyes slightly open. Ah, t -son. And once again, calling my name, she just slightly so very very slightly showed me that shy smile that she always had and so i gripped Esme's hand tightly for some reason i wanted to do that i had a feeling that i must do that for a while we stayed like that before i realized Esme wasn't breathing and i understood that sb had died she called my name the hand i held was warm she liked orange juice, she smiled for me at the end. At the end. And so Esme disappeared and became etched in my own story.
The national roads were extending. Pachinko parlors kept building along the rail lines. The word school violence started to become popular. The mid-1980s. Those days. Boring? Fuck. Dispassionate. Merciless reality. Not dramatic like on television or movies. Not flashy. Monotonous every day. Days where even thought there wouldn't be anything especially fun planned. You'd still count the days to the weekend. It was a world where we look upon boring days. Yearn for excitement in our imaginations. Desire for a place in the world where our only values keep building up and we always try to protect ourselves within safe boundaries. But it's also a word you should simply throw away. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that was Narkizu Himeko's epilogue and after or afterwards 1980 Truly epic, as Narkizu first, as Narkizu second, that was truly epic. Well, we have one more game coming soon, because it's already released, and after that, waiting for the release of two stories, if I remember correctly. Two more stories, so yeah. Well, truly epic, even, even for, I repeated that, because, well, as I said in the beginning, I had to, because of the software malfunction. Uh, I actually cried a bit once again. God damn it, uh, it's just impossible to hold tears while playing Tarkizu. That's, that's what I came up to, that's my conclusion. Truly epic story and still definitely, well, being my top when it comes to visual novels. Oh. Well, kinetic novels because no choices but still that's how it is all right let's end this for now hope you enjoyed it go buy the game by yourself as well because it's worth it and well see you in the next one bye bye